millions of Canadian geese have migrated to and invaded many areas in the United States. They have caused billions of dollars in damage to American agriculture and the environment. Although many countermeasures have been put in place, the number of Canadian geese is still increasing rapidly. The U.S. government had to take extreme measures. Join us in watching this video until the end to learn how to deal with Canadian goose species. Hello friends, is your area affected by this goose species? They are present in most parks, on lawns and roads. In lakes is also where they often approach and live. In the fields, they gather in large flocks and eat up crop fields. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Canada geese cause about $1.5 billion in damage to American agriculture each year. A worrying increase in Canada goose populations has pushed researchers and farmers to reach for effective solutions to control them. One of the notable methods used is trapping Canada geese with nets. This method had significant results and has played an important role in minimizing the harmful effects of Canada geese on American agriculture. The operating principle of the Canada goose net trap method is simple but effective. Nets are placed in areas where Canada geese are abundant, especially in agriculture areas where they often cause damage. This is an harmful method for Canada geese, helping to control their population without causing damage to the environment. The results after using the method of trapping Canada geese with nets are encouraging. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, in 2023, this method caught more than 600,000 Canadian geese. This is an impressive number, showing that knitting Canada geese traps is truly effective in controlling invasive Canada goose populations. This means minimizing their impact on agriculture and environment. The positive impact does not stop at controlling Canada goose numbers, but also extends to economic benefits. The method of trapping Canada geese with nets has helped minimizing the harmful effects of Canada geese on American agriculture. According to estimates, this method has helped American farmers save about $100 million in damage costs caused by Canadian geese. This means not only an effective control measure, but also a significant economic benefit for farming communities and the national economy. The use of hunting dogs has also been applied and practiced to deal with Canadian geese. Despite significant efforts, Canadian goose numbers have not changed much.
the US government applied pressure and was forced to take the most extreme measures to control the situation. In this situation, hunting methods have been given to priority by focusing on reducing the number of Canadian geese in order to reduce damage to agriculture and protect the environment. Although there is so much debate regarding the ethics of Canadian goose hunting, optimizing its effectiveness remains a top priority for governments and stakeholders. Until now, hunting Canadian geese has become a popular method that American farmers often apply to reduce the damage that these geese cause to American agriculture. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, about 2 million Canadian geese are hunted in the U.S. each year, helping to limit their population and reduce the damage they cause. Although this measure has achieved positive results, it has also caused many controversies related to ethical aspects and requires consideration and implementation. Hunting Canada geese is actually an effective way to control invasive Canadian geese. Information from the U.S. Department of Agriculture shows that since 2016, after people expanded hunting of Canadian geese, their numbers have decreased by about 10%. This has contributed to reducing damage caused by Canadian geese to American agriculture by approximately 20%. However, to implement this method effectively and without causing controversy, cooperation between authorities and farmers is needed. To be able to hunt, hunters will spend a lot of time and effort. They were forced to place puppets imitating Canadian geese to call them to come. They will hide in high grass areas to hunt. Hunting Canada geese is currently the only measure that has had significant results in controlling their numbers. Although Canadian goose hunting benefits agriculture and the environment, the ethical aspect is always a concern. The extreme practice of hunting Canadian geese not only involves the animal's right to live, but also raises questions about our approach to pest control. This requires consideration and collaboration between stakeholders. Canadian goose hunting can be an effective way to control invasive Canadian geese, but it needs to be done thoughtfully. And ethically, the focus should be on reducing damage to American agriculture and protecting the environment, while ensuring that this hunting is done correctly and responsibly. After being harvested, the geese will be brought home from processing. The meat of this species is gradually becoming one of the most popular meats in America. So the real question is, what measures are you using to deal with this Canadian goose problem? Please comment below in the comment section to let us know. And for now, let's continue watching the next video. 
In the 1500s, these colonists had several reasons for bringing wild boar from Europe to America. One of the main reasons was food. Pigs were a valuable source of protein that could be raised relatively easily and provided a sustainable source of meat for colonists. In addition, pigs are known for their ability to adapt to new environments and forge food, making them a valuable resource for the early settlers. They are also used for hunting because they are often released into the wild to breed and establish populations that can later be hunted. Today, feral pigs can be found in almost every state in the United States. Texas has the largest hog population, currently having about 6 million wild boars in the United States, with more than 2.6 million wild boars in Texas alone. These animals have adapted to new environments and can thrive in a variety of habitats, from forests to wild swamps. Pigs damage crops, spread disease, and can even pose a threat to humans and other animals. Many attempts have been made to control their populations over the years, from trapping and hunting to aerial shooting, but have been unsuccessful. They are omnivores. They will eat varieties of food sources, including plants, insects, small animals, and carrion. Their keen sense of smell and nighttime activity make them effective foragers by using their powerful snout to locate food. Pigs play an important role in the food chain. As both prey and predators, they are the main food source for many large carnivores, such as Komodo, bears, wolves, and big cats. Wild boars will roam their territory in search of females in heat. When the wild boar finds it, it will fertilize her. After pregnancy, the female will seek out a safe and secure area to give birth to her litter of piglets. Unlike domestic pigs, wild pigs will leave their cubs in a safe place and go to feed, then return to feed the cubs. After the piglets are weaned, they will join the mother and other members of the pig group and forage for food and shelter from predators.
A group can range in size from a few individuals to over 20 individuals, with females and their young often forming the core of the group. Male wild boars are usually solitary, but they can also join groups during the breeding season for behavioral and social understanding. Their presence in the United States has had a significant negative impact. Wild boars cause more than $2 billion in damage to crops and property each year, with damage to agricultural crops accounting for approximately $1.5 billion. Of that total, in some areas, Texas feral hogs have been estimated to cause more than 50% damage to crops like corn and soybeans. Additionally, they trample and consume crops, leaving traces that can take years to recover and can also damage irrigation systems. Their behavior can also cause soil erosion, which can lead to sediment runoff and water pollution. All of these factors can have a negative impact on the environment and surrounding ecosystems. The problem of feral swine overpopulation in the United States has prompted various government agencies and organizations to take action. Because of the animal's intelligent adaptations and nocturnal behavior, hunters and trappers must be skilled and experienced to successfully capture wild boars, and they may need specialized equipment such as traps and trained dogs. Many states require hunters to report their wild boar harvests, to monitor population trends, and determine the effectiveness of feral hog hunting. A high-strength electric fence is the most effective type of fence for this purpose, as it can withstand the strength of wild boar. The height and strength of the fence are important factors that determine its effectiveness, as wild boars are very strong and can jump over low fences. Therefore, the fence must be at least three feet high and made of sturdy material. These animals have proven to be incredibly resilient and adaptable in the face of environmental change and human activity. So since these solutions have been affecting in preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.